Hello, my name is Susie, and you might be wondering what is going on with my haircut? Well, that's what this video is about. Kind of. I've talked a lot about my experience undergoing proton therapy, as well as multiple surgeries, and in this video I would like to discuss the after treatment. Basically how treatment changed my life with its side effects and whatnot. Just as a disclaimer, please be aware that I'm in no way, shape, or form a doctor. Shocker. I am just a patient. Also, even if you have the same exact diagnosis, your tumor is located in the same exact spot, it's the same exact size, and you undergo the same exact treatments, the outcomes might be different. We're humans, each body is different, reacts to things in a different way and that's just how it goes so just take this video for what it is my personal experience also since it is my personal experience and it's not always easy for me to talk about it please be respectful in the comments if you have to be mean or say something against my treatments just don't it would hurt me really bad and that's not what this video is for so, for those who don't know, my diagnosis is pleomorphic adenoma of the right parotid gland. I know, it sounds like an insult. Before talking about the side effects I have from proton therapy, um, we're gonna talk about the side effects I have from surgery. When I woke up from my very first surgery in 2008, the right half of my face was completely paralyzed. I wish I had videos or photos from them, but at that time I was in my teenage years and I was very concerned about my appearance, so no cameras were allowed anywhere near me. Anyway, luckily I got my mobility completely back. However, the surgery did change my life in other ways. The main side effect, I would say that when I eat, I sweat. But you accept me for what I am, right? It's gross when you video it. I have to show them what happens. Mm -hmm. I do. But look. The craziest thing is that I cannot control it at all. I originally thought that was tied to the quantity of food I ate, but sometimes I eat one candy and I sweat more than I do after eating a whole plate of pasta. More videos of your sweat. Yeah, so I need to show that it happens every time. Every See, time. I'm eating cookies now. And that's what happens. Oh, it's about to drip. I should probably dry it. So how do I dry it? I just use my t-shirt. Delightful. So I have a question for you. <laughs> Now, you have to tell me, mm -hmm. does my um, post-surgery sweat stink? No! Does it stink? Not really. Not really? <laughs> not really. Or not at all? I don't like my... I don't like this video. I did inquire about the possibility of fixing this thing and they told me there is a surgery that I could do but it could either work and solve the problem don't work at all or make the problem even worse thanks but no thanks the sweating is something that took time to adjust to now I don't feel uglier or less important because of the side effects but of course as I was going through my teenage years my self-esteem was zero to none is a zero non
Oh, am I dead hot that I make you sweat? Oh, come on! It was a joke! Also, right after surgery, my taste buds would hurt when eating something too acid. I remember my grandma bringing me strawberries. They look so big and tasty and juicy. But as soon as I put one in my mouth, it was excruciating pain and no enjoyment at all. Luckily, this does not happen anymore. Okay, it's not really a strawberry, but I grew this tomato. Oh, give them to me. They're very pretty. Pretty tomato. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. What do I do now? Since my first surgery, I also lost sensitivity to my right ear. So I can't feel it at all. To the point that I broke my ear with a helmet. Yep, you heard that right. I used to drive a scooter when I was in high school and my helmet was really, really tight. As I guess helmets should be. Every time I would put the helmet on, I would make sure that it wasn't hurting my ears. And thinking about it, I often had to adjust my left ear. Well, apparently my right ear was hurting too, but I just couldn't feel it. So this happened. Can you see it? Can you see that it's broken? Can you make it viewable? It doesn't hurt, so you just make it so it's viewable. I, I just don't know. I, I can't tell that it's broken. Oh, but can you feel it with your hand? Like here. Yeah, I mean, it's folded a bit, but it doesn't really... It doesn't well, but look. touch. If you touch here, you can feel that there's it's disconnected. Like it's... I guess so. I guess like right there. I guess you can kind of feel the nub of where the cartilage is kind of, like it kind of does, like you can tell that it's like, like if your ear is like this, mm -hmm. it kind of looks like that. It kind of feels like that. Yeah, but I guess I can't really show, can I? Yeah, it's a bit tough. Okay, well, you just have to trust me. The more surgeries I did, the more my facial nerves hardened. They eventually got a little paralyzed, but honestly, nothing to complain about. Also, I feel like my muscles here are not holding this up as it used to. So if you see, like, I know everyone has a lazy eye, but this one is particularly lazy and you can see it in all, 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 all of the photos I take. Nowadays, there are techniques that help uh, avoid as much damage as possible. In fact, every time you do a surgery in this area, there is a big risk of waking up with some level of facial paralysis. First of all, because the tumor is really close to the facial nerves. And if you already had some surgery, there's also the scar tissue from the previous surgery. So actually I was really lucky because the hospital where I did my third surgery, they used a technique called USDAS, where basically they colored the tumor with a blue dye. This allows the doctors to better see the tumor and distinguish it from the facial nerves. Since they originally have pretty much the same color and the facial nerves are thinner than a hair. And the result, of course, is a very, very precise job for which I'm extremely grateful. However, also after this last surgery, I got one side effect. When I turn my head to the left, I feel pain over here and also over here, like a mild headache. Then as soon as I turn back, the headache disappears. And also when I lay and get up in a certain way, so I guess move certain muscles, it also hurts here. But hey, I can't complain. I can still smile. So I'm not sure if it's easily understandable, but I meant um, because my facial nerves are still okay. So you get the point.
I believe this concludes my side effects from surgery. Now let's carry on with the proton therapy side effects. Oh boy, I never thought I'd be making this video at 28 years old. During treatment, as you might have seen in one of my previous videos, my skin got really irritated. But that's just a classic result from radiation. I was actually very lucky because my skin never tear which does happen to many patients. During treatment, I would also occasionally get ulcers in my mouth. But again, from what I heard, I was really lucky compared to other patients. In fact, I only got a few and they would always resolve within one or two days. At times, in my irradiated ear, I would hear a whistling. This was just a sign of a mild infection, which luckily um, always resolved itself without needing any medication. Right after treatment, to my surprise, all of my side effects pretty much disappeared. I thought I was a walking miracle. Well, fast forward to one year later. Boy, do I have side effects now. Cheers! First of all, the right side of my face feels much stiffer, which leads me to often wake up with a headache because I guess my muscles are so tight. But it typically resolves itself without needing any medication, just after a big, big coffee. Also, when I touch here, it always mildly hurts, as if I just got slapped in the face. Another uncomfortable thing that happens is cramps. Basically, out of nowhere, my uh, right lower lip starts cramping and also my chin i guess and to me it feels like they get stuck like this for a moment but i don't think that anyone looking at me can see it can you see that this is cramping what's cramping this oh you have to be quick it's like... well it's not cramping anymore other times uh when i drink or yawn i get a different type of cramp more painful and to the whole area sometimes even all the way down here <sighs> oh cramp 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 when i eat i can't open my mouth all the way anymore right when i wake up i have the hardest time properly opening my mouth and as the day goes and I use my mouth to chew and talk, it does get better. However, I can't easily eat big sandwiches or have a hard time with apples, but honestly, all it takes is to cut the food in slices and I'm good. After eating a big meal, so after chewing for a while, I get tiny cramps under my tongue on the right side. It is rather annoying, but it eventually passes. Something that is uh, annoying yet enjoyable is that sometimes I get a tingling in my irradiated area. It's almost like a tickle, like when your leg falls asleep and I kind of like it, but then I remember it comes from radiotherapy, so that kind of kills the mood. One side effect that I do like is that my right ear completely stopped producing earwax. I know that this isn't necessarily a good thing, but I do like it. The latest side effect I got gave me a big scare initially. I started having very weird cramps on my head here. And when it happens, it feels like someone is pulling my hair, but no one actually is. So this really scared me because in theory, this area never got irradiated. So I was really afraid, but the doctor explained to me that there's nothing to worry about because all the nerves are connected and probably the nerve that's annoying me up here is connected to a nerve that actually got irradiated. So the feeling is projected over here too, even though this area never got any radiation. I hope this makes sense. It did make sense when the doctor explained it to me. I'm just not sure if I'm doing a good job here. And these are all the side effects I currently- <clears throat> Aren't you forgetting something? Huh? Oh, right. Last but not least, during proton therapy, I lost hair in the irradiated area. 
So this basically is a little over one year worth of hair growth. And these are all the side effects I currently have. I will most likely have to live with them or at least with most of them for the rest of my life and I will probably get even more down the road. But you do what you gotta do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions or want to share your experience, please comment down below. And again, please, please, please be respectful. I know that's not how the internet works, but it's worth a try.